All right, we're ready for part two of this lesson. This is lesson four, lesson four of sixth grade ocean, atmosphere, and climate unit. And we're going to be reading an article about how the ocean is in motion. So to be the most successful, there's a couple of things you're going to need for part two of this lesson, which is that if you can get a copy of the article to write notes in as we go, that's great. If you don't have a copy, not a problem. I'm going to read it and you can watch it on the screen. And anytime you want to take a note, just jot it down on a piece of paper. So that's something else you're going to need, something to write with, to write on. And then having another person to talk to while you're doing this lesson is going to help you be the most successful that you can be. All right, I'm going to show you how to find this article. You can go to your Amplify Science account and then right here at the top, right here in the main menu, open that. And then you're going to scroll down until you get to library, which looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to go down their alphabetical order until we find it. We find it right here. And we are going to go to the one that's called the Ocean in Motion. So we just click over here until we find the article that we're looking for, which is right here. Now, if you would rather have a paper copy of that, let me show you how you can get access to that one. For a paper copy, you can get that from the Lesson 4 packet. So if you go to seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science, then you can scroll down the screen until you get to middle school and then open up the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit Packet 4. And, or it will say Packet for Lesson 4. Once you get to that, you can just open it up and you'll have a paper version of it. And again, if you're just following along with me, we can do this together. You don't even need to have a different version of the article. You should be able to read it on the screen just fine. So the title of this article is The Ocean in Motion. There's a picture here and the caption of the picture says, thousands of shoes fell off the ship that was carrying them across the ocean. Eventually, some of those shoes washed up on this beach. People collected them and tried to find matched pairs. Surprising things sometimes wash up on shore and this can happen all over the world. During a powerful storm in 1990, containers packed with 61,000 shoes fell off a cargo ship traveling across the Pacific Ocean and eventually washed up on beaches in Oregon, Hawaii, and Japan. These locations are hundreds or thousands of miles away from the place where the shoes were spilled. How did the shoes make their way to these locations. If you look at a photograph of Earth, most of what you see is the big blue ocean. After all, the ocean covers 71% of our planet. I'm going to pause for a moment because that's amazing. I'm going to just take a moment to highlight that because I think what a cool fact. Okay, let's begin again. In a photograph or on a map, it may not look like the ocean moves very much, but the opposite is actually true. The water in the ocean is always moving from place to place, carrying objects and organisms wherever it goes. So the shoes are getting carried around in the ocean, but I think it's interesting about the organisms because when I think of fish, whales, and other types of things that live in the ocean, I think they kind of carry themselves around. But there are organisms like little floating things like plankton that do actually get carried by the ocean. They, they can't really move very much by themselves. So that's interesting to think about. Okay, ocean water doesn't move randomly. It flows in consistent patterns. That feels to me like the kind of of information that Kitty Parada was hoping we would get from this article when we were reading it. And I think it helps us understand what the title, The Ocean in Motion, is kind of telling us. So let's take a moment to write a note. So I will start by highlighting and then adding a note. And you can just write this on your paper if you want to. Let me move my picture. And I think I want to write a question here because I wonder what causes the ocean to move and why does it follow patterns? So the questions I wrote are, what causes the ocean to move? Why does it follow patterns? Just really curious about these questions. Okay, so let's kind of keep reading. 
I'm going to save that note. Scientists call ocean water flowing in a continuous path an ocean current. Hey, that's a new vocab word. If you're on the computer, you can check this out too, but I can click on where it says ocean current and it gives me the de definition. That's clever. Ocean water flowing in a continuous path. Currents carry all kinds of objects and organisms all over the world. The shoes made their way across the ocean with the help of ocean currents. Oh, cool. There's a map here. Let's take a look at this. Oh, um, you can see Australia here. You can see that there's a lot of ocean because remember 71% of our planet is covered with water. That is New Zealand. And the, the Maori people who live in New Zealand, they're the original people that have lived there for hundreds of years. They have a, a name for the country of New Zealand called Aotearoa, which means land of the long white cloud. And if you look there at it, you can see why they might have named it that. That's cool. Let's keep going. Okay, the ocean covers 71% of Earth and it is in constant motion. Two facts, that's cool. The movement of the ocean carries energy and objects wherever it goes. Okay, so that's important because we already read about how it's carrying objects. And now in the caption, it mentions the word energy. So I'm going to highlight that carries energy. And that's something that I'm looking forward to learning more about. So let's keep reading. Okay. In addition to objects and organisms, ocean currents carry energy from the sun all around the earth. Okay, so I have a couple questions. I'm gonna just go ahead and highlight that. Now, here's what I'm wondering. How does the ocean get energy from the sun? So from what I'm hearing from the article, it says ocean currents carry energy from the sun. So the ocean current, is that on the surface and it's absorbing the energy from the sun? Is it deep underneath the surface and it's somehow getting energy from the surface? Like, how does the current get energy? So I'm going to ask that question to, to do some, a little bit more research so that when I find an answer, I might recognize it. Okay, I wrote my question. It was just under my picture, but how does the ocean current, oh, that's supposed to say get, get energy from the sun. So interesting. Very interesting. Okay, let's keep reading. Okay, in fact, the motion of water around Earth's ocean is one of the main ways energy moves around the planet. That's cool. Energy from the sun is transferred to the ocean's surface. So you can see those are some underlined and blue dots words. We already know the word transfer means to move energy or objects from one location to another. But the word surface is the outside or top layer of something. We talked about the atmosphere being the layer of gas that surrounds a planet. Well, the surface is the top layer, in this case, the surface of the Earth. It's the top layer of the Earth, the planet itself. And then the atmosphere is right above that. Okay. As the currents move across Earth's surface, the energy moves with them. I do think this is important where it talks about Earth's ocean is one of the main ways energy moves around the planet. I think that's an important thing to make a note of. So I am going to um, just highlight that. And then what kind of question could I ask? I wonder what are the other ways besides the ocean? Like how else does energy move around Earth's, around Earth? So I think I'll ask that question. I think it's a good idea to dot, jot down any questions you're thinking at this point. If I had to maybe wonder or make a guess about other ways that energy moves around, I might think of earthquakes. Those seem like they have a lot of energy. Volcanoes, that's a lot of energy. I might think of plate tectonics, if you're familiar with that. Um, I might think about weather, like rain and thunderstorms. Those seem like they have a lot of energy. There's probably others that you can think of. So that's some interesting things to think about. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Energy from the sun is transferred to the ocean surface. As the currents move around Earth's surface, the energy moves with them. 
okay, that seems important. So the energy comes from the sun to the surface of the earth, including a liquid surface of the ocean. And as the currents move, they take that energy from the sun with them. Okay, I feel like that might kind of help me understand a little bit about what I was asking in this question, which is how does the ocean current get energy from the sun? So with additional information, I might add a little bit more to my note. I might add this. So I added energy from the sun is transferred to the ocean's surface. And as the currents move across Earth's surface, the energy moves with them. Okay, so let's just close that note and let's keep reading. Okay, let's look at this map a little bit more. So it has Australia, um, New Zealand, the equator. We have the Pacific Ocean labeled as North Pacific and South Pacific. And there is an orange arrow that's pointing, I guess, north. If this is the North Pacific Ocean and this is the equator, so there's an orange arrow. And I can see from the key that it says warm current, orange arrow. So when I look at the whole map, I see orange here and I think, oh, that must be a warm current. Okay. Now, the caption is going to help us out. It says, a warm current moves moving north from the equator keeps Japan warmer than other places at the same latitude. Oh, that's interesting. The current shown on the map above is moving away from the equator. At the equator, a large amount of energy is transferred from the sun to the ocean surface. As the current moves north, it carries this energy with it. If you place your finger on the map anywhere where this current moves, the water there would be warmer than you would expect for a location at this latitude because of the current that moves through the area. I love this statement, as the current moves north, it carries the energy with it. I think we should highlight that. That's cool. So these are the two statements that I highlighted. I think they're probably the most important. As I was reading it, that was the idea that I had. So as the current moves north, it carries energy with it. It's big stuff. Okay. Oh, there's another picture. Oh, interesting. Look, this picture shows a blue arrow. So looking carefully at the key, I can see that the blue arrow represents a cool current. Okay. So a cold current traveling north from Antarctica keeps the western coast of Australia cooler than other locations at the same latitude. Oh, so that's just kind of the opposite of what we saw in the previous picture of the ocean current off the coast of Japan. Okay, the current shown on the map above is moving away from the South Pole. The further away from the equator you are, the less energy is transferred from the sun to the ocean surface. That's what we learned in lesson two. With the least amount of energy transferred at the poles. This means the current traveling from the South Pole carries less energy with it than currents coming from the equator. If the ocean water weren't moving, then ocean surface temperatures in different locations would only depend on their latitudes. So if the whole ocean was frozen water instead of liquid water and it couldn't move, then it wouldn't be able to take that energy with it. But because ocean currents move as they move they take energy with them as they go however in locations where a cold current moves past the ocean surface temperature is lower than you would expect i really think we should add some notes here the two paragraphs that we just read have talked about how energy can move from one location on the planet to another by moving through ocean currents that seems important i think you should write either a question or a comment so pause the video so you can have enough time to really think about what you might want to say. If you're doing the lesson with someone, then you can share your ideas with each other. And then come back and join me and we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that a student could write in this part of the paragraph. Okay, do you have some questions? Do you have some new notes? Do you have some ideas? I wish we were together so that I could hear some of your ideas. In the past, I've had students tell me that this, sentence here is really important so I highlighted it. Currents traveling from the South Pole carry less energy with it than currents coming from the equator. So I added I added two notes. One is a question. I wondered the question that I wondered is what kind of energy are currents carrying? 
And then the second thing I wrote, just as kind of a summary, is ocean currents coming from the equator carry more energy than ocean currents coming from the poles. I feel like that's the thing that I've learned from these two maps and the paragraphs that were explaining them. Okay. The maps above make it look like ocean currents are constant. However, ocean currents can sometimes change direction. Oh, that's cool. Since ocean currents carry, carry energy around Earth, a change in the direction a current moves can change ocean surface temperatures at any locations the currents pass on its journey. In many parts of the ocean, surface currents come together to form gyres. Ooh, vocab word! huge areas of water moving in big circles. So the definition of a gyre is a giant pattern of moving water that spans whole oceans and moves water from place to place in a circle. Okay, all right. Cool. Altogether, these gyres move water in a predictable pattern all over the globe, carrying energy, organisms, and other objects with them. That's how shoes were spilled in the middle of the ocean can end up in Oregon, Hawaii, and Japan. I think this kind of answers that question we had at the beginning about why do ocean currents move the way that they do? It sounds like they're part of a gyre, but I still wonder, like, why does the gyre form in a circle? What causes it to do that? So there's a little bit more investigation that we're going to need to do in order to understand this. Okay, so here is... Whoa, this is a super complicated map, but it does have a lot of lines. Some are red, some are blue. The key, which is right down here, you can kind of see it there, shows warm current, red, cool current, blue. Okay, ocean currents form five main gyres or circles. The Indian Ocean Gyre, the North Pacific Gyre, the South Pacific Gyre, and the North Atlantic Gyre and the South Atlantic Gyre. So if I look here, I'm looking for a circular path and I see one here really clearly. It looks like sometimes as it moves through this gyre, sometimes the arrows are blue and sometimes they're red. I think that depends on where they're coming from. So this one's red, it's a warm current. It must be coming from the equator. And this, now the water current has turned blue, which means it's moving up from the pole. So we can see that gyre forming. Okay, I feel like this article had a lot of information. I'm really glad that Katie Parada sent it to us so that we could use this to help us understand more about how the oceans move energy all around the planet.